Welcome back to Heartbeats Vanity, guys. It is Taylor here. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. I do want to give you guys an update on what I found that I was able to update on because there's been so much that's gone on over the last week and a half with this situation that it's been, I've just been taking it all in. And each time I begin to start, you know, making a video, I will eventually have to scratch the video because so much has come out. So now I officially think that it is okay to make a commentary video on the updates. So today's main focus is going to be my summary and my thoughts and opinions on the second Shiloh interview with Chris Hansen. I, when I first made the Patient Zero Twitter, I made it, you know, in the middle of talking to one of my friends and having enough of seeing uh, one of the victims get talked down for trying to tell her story. And I had no idea that even you would contact me and that we would even be sitting here right now. And on top of all the things that we've accomplished and that we have, I mean, the day his Patreon got taken down, I was like, okay, this is, this could be something this, we could really, we could really help these girls that we might actually be able to get justice here because I have to admit, I've spent the last 10 years thinking that I was never, ever going to think. And I mean, okay, 10 years, um, eight years, um, okay. that I really did think I was never going to get a voice. I didn't think I was ever going to get justice, especially legal. Um, and so, I mean, sitting here knowing how how this is moving there's more out there it isn't just greg it isn't just onision you know there is more like this and so when this is over it isn't over we have to keep our eyes open yet he's still on youtube as we sit here speaking that, right now that's the bizarre thing to me and i don't know what 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 susan's doing Susan Wojcicki, the CEO of YouTube. I don't, I don't know what she's doing. Well, we're going to continue on this show. And, and personally, you know, I'm going to continue as a reporter trying to get some answers from her. We did have contact, as you know, yeah. um, and, and not much happened after that. There was a statement from YouTube as an umbrella policy of, you know, abuse and predatory behavior in streaming. But, you know, I, I can't imagine that they wouldn't want to come on and talk about this and, and do something about it in this forum. I did, we're broadcasting this show on YouTube, yet they refuse to come on this show and talk about this very critical issue, both as a specific case relating to Onision, Greg James, and as a general policy situation with other streamers. And you know, and I know, there are other streamers who are facing these same allegations. Yes. And I mean, it isn't that we're reaching out to Susan just because, you know, oh, hear me, pity me and my story. It isn't about that. It's about the bigger picture. The fact that these people, people like Onision have this platform and have this ability to, I mean, I know of five that I can, you know, think of right now that are still streaming, still making videos besides Greg. You know, this is a big problem and it's way past my story and it's way past this story. It's a it's a bigger issue. And that's why we're reaching out to you, Susan. You know, we it's you don't want to be that guy. That's all I'm saying is you don't want to be the one that's, you know, you don't want to be the landlord of the serial killer and know about it. That's, that's brilliant, by the way. Can I just give you that? I mean, that's that's brilliant. Analogy. And, I mean, I just, I just thought, I mean, I was just watching a TV show that reminded me of it not, not, not long ago. And I'm like, you, you, you know, how could you know about something like that and not inform your tenants? They have from the beginning, every single video, they've made a very huge and very important point. Why has the YouTube CEO or the YouTube affiliates not done a single thing about this particular creator, Onision, and, and many more. They use their platform to get a hold or eventually try to set, I guess, their eggs in a basket 
for lack of a better term, to do the manipulation that they are succeeding eventually in doing. There's theories. There's theories as to why. It's maybe because he hasn't been prosecuted yet. It's because, you know, the things that he has up uploaded um, kind of slide under the rug, under the loophole. Some of them don't, and they're clearly, you know, grounds to remove his channel. But for some reason, he slipped by that whole situation. Um, but there is no ultimate answer. I have said before, and I stand by it now, as many of us do who commentate on any of this, is that it is extremely negligent and it is part of the problem. You know, not only are there people out there that exist like Onision, but the people that sort of give platform, right, to the companies, sorry, not the people, the companies that give platform to these individuals are also part of the problem. I understand that Onision as it was at one point a big money maker for YouTube. I can logically understand that at one point, but I don't see that being the case now. And just because he was something at one point does not protect him from the terms of service rules, does not protect him from those rules that are put in place to keep younger viewers safe. Those were why those were created, among other reasons, depending on what rule we're referring to. But in specifics here, that is one of the reasons, right? So for them making general statements that don't really give a full answer, that is sort of like a, you know, push around answer that, oh, if he breaks this rule, he's completely terminated, da 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 da, da. It just seems like a big cop out to me. They are being asked directly. They are not answering directly. And I really think what it's going to have to take, unfortunately, in this situation is being prosecuted. And then I believe they'll finally do something. And it shouldn't have, it should have never gotten that far. When you know that your viewer audience age is a certain age group, which Onision's is, and he's doing and putting out content like this, and it gets flagged enough, you would think that they would act, they would have grounds to act. Um, they would at least have enough grounds to send out a warning, but they... I've never done that to my knowledge. So to me, it's negligent. And to me, I have lost a lot of faith in the platform itself because of this. I know in the past, there have been some creators that have gotten removed for inappropriate content and other reasons. But usually what and from my understanding, what that took was them being prosecuted or found guilty. And that's not, I think, the threshold that they should allow Um to be viewed as the final cut, I guess you could say. To me, I think that action should be taken long before someone commits an act that eventually maybe they could get caught with and found guilty of. If there is proof of a certain audience age and there are certain videos being put out, I think that there should be some sort of action being taken seriously enough to protect the younger audiences and give out warnings to those creators who have been reported enough and who have had tr like problematic, I guess you could say for lack of a better term, content. Um, I think that that should be a threshold in attempts to protect the younger audiences. I do understand there are some settings on YouTube that uh, like, you know, is your, is your video appropriate for children, but not all content creators are being held accountable if they don't mark their videos appropriately. And that to me is a big problem. You've been going through therapy, intensive therapy, Shiloh. How is it going? How has it helped? Has it saved you in some respects? You know, you're talking to somebody who thought that they would never get it and kind of was like, no, I don't want to talk to somebody who hasn't been through what I've been through. Um, I'm a very quiet person about my trauma and about what I've been through. And I will admittedly say, speaking with a trauma therapist, um, I'm currently dealing with an eating disorder. Speaking with a therapist that deals with that is, uh, it's, it's very helpful. And to anybody out there who doubts it, um, it you can go through some trial and error. You know, you, if somebody isn't right for you, you can seek out different help. You know, the, it, it is about, the, the, you know, the energy and the vibe, of course. Um, so find somebody who is right for you. Um, and it can very much so help you. It's helped me a lot. And this is why we say this is a bigger issue. This is why he can't be on YouTube. This is and why I'm not talking about just one or two emails. It's not an aberration. I, 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 numerous, numerous comments about this. This is why we need to deplatform these people. Because that is, I didn't even think about that. That is so, wow. Nor did I. And it, it honestly, wow. it blew me away. Yeah, wow. I'm blown away currently. <laughs> that's, 
that the the effects the effects that he has on people i mean wow yeah, given all this and everything we know shiloh how is it possible that he's still on youtube doing this i mean he he'll probably and i don't want to give him any attention or the time of day and i'm not going to talk about it after this but he'll probably release some sort of stupid video criticizing me in some form or fashion and going after you in some way and you know my statement to him is you know look i was a reporter before you were born i'll be a reporter you know after you go to prison yeah you know i'm just doing my job here albeit very passionate about it but i i you just can't even get into the mind of a person who who will go back out and keep at it as what's, as he's under multiple criminal investigations here what's unfortunate as i think right now the only thing that's going to take him off of youtube is him literally going away I don't think YouTube's going to be the one to take him off. You know, I, I feel, I feel like in he's, he's going to, you know, he's going to go to prison and then he'll be off YouTube. I think the awareness that Shiloh here is spreading about therapy and different types of therapy and the truth behind finding a therapist that works for you is so very important because that is very true. I, in the same way, um, just like Shiloh described how she kind of takes her pain and she's silent about it for a little while, you know, and then she never thought she was going to be the kind of person to seek out therapy. I was also like that. I never thought I was going to be the kind of person to seek out therapy. And then I consistently started doing so. And I do feel like I've made progress. Now I'm constantly in my life with my trauma. I'm going to have to continue on with therapy and I'm okay understanding and knowing that with myself, but to spread awareness like that for maybe somebody who isn't quite there yet is so very important. And to give, you know, some peace of mind knowing that maybe not every single therapist that, you know, everybody says will be the right one will work for you. And that's okay. That is completely okay to shop around for a therapist. You don't have to just settle. If you're truly not vibing or if, you know, you feel like you're not getting success from one therapist doesn't mean that another therapist isn't going to help you with, um, you know, isn't going to help you with a situation. It's heartbreaking to know that Onision gets to cause this type of turmoil in multiple people's lives, including Shiloh's. And, um, you know, they will be dealing with this type of stuff for the rest of their life and uh, just still be on the platform. Be on the platform so much so that he's making, I don't even know, I think it was like 50 videos over the course of two days. I, I'm pretty sure that number's off a little bit or more. But, Actually, going over some of the topics, I watched the mirrored videos as ma as many as I could without, you know, just combusting. But the thing is, though, is it's like how he describes them, how he describes each individual situation just blew my mind. And it wasn't because he was telling truth. No, you could see the contradictions. You could see how ludicrous and how just all over the place he was, but how much detail he would give out to personal situations that, you know, just to me had no need, no need. The manipulation tactics that he was using, obviously gaslighting, um, backpedaling, you know, he was doing all of these things for a reason. It wasn't to get his story out because why now? Why not earlier, right? And it wasn't because his spouse decided to say, be quiet, be quiet, because when has Onision ever listened to his spouse? I mean, come on, ding, ding, ding. That's not the truth there. We all know that. Um, there was a specific reason, and I agree with Shiloh. It was to try to aim to silence Sarah and silence other people he brought up, um, you know, with using traumatic experiences and sort of distorting reality on some certain events that, of course, I won't know every single thing that happened. I didn't live through it, but many have already pointed out inconsistencies and just distortion. So to me, it was an attempt to... Again, try to manipulate his audience, try to manipulate people viewing this and commentating on this, and then, again, to try to silence and put people back in their, for lack of a better term, their spot of not being able to speak, not having any platforms, but he tried to keep so many people in for so long. Victimized by Onision, had anything in common? Did he sense something in his predatory style? I think we're all very understanding, kind, naive to a certain degree. 
people, something about being very understanding about all sorts of people and whatever they may be going through and, and being able to adapt to different personalities. Tolerant. And, yeah. I mean, I can always say I was that kid that sat down with the kid at school that had nobody sitting with him or her. And, you know, that, that felt to me like I was reaching out like, Hey, I feel like you, like, let's do this together. And so I, I feel like he really, on top of the fact that he's obviously taken advantage of girls that come from any sort of broken home circumstance. And it doesn't even have to be a broken home. I mean, I didn't necessarily come from a broken home. I was just rebelling as a teenager and I didn't want to listen to my mom and dad. And so, you know, he caught me just at that point where I was going through all the confusion of being a teenager and feeling all these feelings and essentially, you know, wanting a white picket fence. And he offered that all to me on a silver platter. What was it that finally gave you the strength and courage, Shiloh, to break away from him? And I, and I say that like it's over, but it's not. He continues to this very day to berate and try to re-victimize you and, and the other young women involved in this matter. Yeah, I still, um, I still feel very um, weird flashback feelings of a Stockholm Syndrome-like um, attitude sometimes that I have to curb because of what he's done. And I mean, I've been in love. This, this was not love that I had for this man, but whatever he did, it stuck. And, and he, he, he did it for just enough time. And why I say that is that if my mom hadn't taken my passport from me and I hadn't been able to, you know, be kind of almost caged in a sense away from him, I would have gone back and I don't know what it would have happened. I can guarantee you he would have never, you know, gotten me to lure other young girls into the situation. That's, that's a for sure. Um, but I, I would have gone back, Chris, you know, I was still in that mindset of, I love him. You know, I fought my mom to go back so many times, the money he sent me to get a new passport. I mean, you know how many times they just, said, let's go shopping or let's go do this instead. It was always, let's distract Shiloh from this man because I, I would have been dragged back over and over again. And many of my family members think that I would have ended up doing something harmful to myself. After you appeared earlier here with me on the show, give me a sense of what he did in I want to address the, the the topic that Shiloh said, you know, I would have gone back. Many times in relationships, especially to the magnitude of mental or sometimes even physical abuse that has occurred, a lot of the time the victim will go back for many reasons. The reasons can range from terms known as unequal power, manipulation, love, hope, trauma bonding, all sorts of things um, like Stockholm Syndrome. She mentioned that as well. The manipulation being the gaslighting, the, um, you know, potential, um, you're worthless, you're wrong, you're crazy, it didn't, it didn't happen this way, unequal power, meaning that person has financial power over you if you've been married for a certain amount of time, hope, uh, you know, you obviously hope and wish for a better day, so you give it another chance, or love, you love this person, there's enough time invested, you think that something's going to happen, which kind of ties into the hope situation, trauma bonding can be um, basically when you have had a traumatic situation, your mind can mentally break itself down. And it actually does mentally break down. It's actually something that scientifically can be proven with enough trauma regarding it, PTSD and stuff. So you begin to get, I guess, your, I guess your ability to fight things off are a little weaker over time if you are the victim of the situation, right? And then the, obviously the the person who is doing this to you knows this, they can gather this and they use it against you. And they say, you know, you have nowhere else to go. You know, I'm the one who's taking care of you, stuff like that. Love bombing. An attempt to influence a person with acts of love over acts of affection. Um, you know, I guess as a way to kind of charm you back in. 
And a lot of the time, if there is a lack of a support group, a lack of a, you know, family, like in Shiloh's case where, you know, they're, they're taking their loved one and they're saying, no, this isn't happening. Let's distract them. That that is easy to fall to. That is easy to go back on. And sometimes even when there is a lot of support like that at home or um, to go to, that it is still something that happens no matter what, no matter what is going on outside of it. No matter if you're literally like somebody who is, you know, you're, it's your parent or something like that for an example. And they're saying, please, darling, don't do this. You know, you went through so much pain. That doesn't seem to matter. There is still a manipulation, I guess, on hold. And the official I'm done, for lack of a better term, process is different for every person who's been through a traumatic relationship. That is something that each individual will decide for themselves when they have finally had enough. That's what makes it so hard to get out of these type of things. If you have a friend who you've seen go back into a um, abusive relationship, it's just their process. And you know, you can do the best that you can. You can get them hooked up with the right resources. You can say, you know, and support their and and paint a picture and support that you know the new life that could happen. But really, ultimately, it is that person's choice. And I do want to bring awareness to the fact that I want to start a new video series on these different types of manipulations, how to try to heal and cope with them. Let me know in the comments below if you guys think that that is a good idea or not and what you guys would be interested in seeing and some topics that you guys would be interested in seeing. They can range from you know abusive relationships to growing up in an abusive home or any sort of topic regarding how relationships work and how the structure of relationship can go good or bad and stuff like that. Um, I think my first, let's see, I wrote down the first video idea that I had. Let me know if you guys would like it. Love bombing slash gaslighting in relationships. Good and bad type of stuff. So that's my idea for a new video series. Let me know if you guys think it's okay or if it's just totally not something you'd want to see. I want to know. Comment below. Here, you, you I don't want to say went dark, but you took a break from social media for a while. Uh, were quiet. Why was that important to you? Um. Well, I mean, I was thinking about this this morning and I was like, you know, there's a there's a lot of layers to to why I went quiet. But the the biggest one being I I went quiet because of Onision for a very specific reason. And that when I told my story, I got bombarded with so much hatred and um, just just it, it was drama, drama, drama all the time. You know, people spreading rumors that didn't even make sense. Um, people taking things out of context, twisting things, him himself twisting things. Um, so I eventually went quiet. I mean, it affected my personal life. It affected, you know, meeting new people and then immediately knowing who I was or, uh, you know, just simply like, hey, I'm Shiloh, like, nice to meet you. And then somebody pipes up in the group about what you do or the fact that you're a musician and they go and Google you. And the first thing that comes up is all this Onision crap. And so I went quiet and, and it, it did me good because I was able to regain an anonymity to my life. And, you know, like I've, I've had guys go on dates with me and then confess to me halfway through it. Like, like this was a dare. We just wanted to see if you were really as crazy as he said. Really? So the guys yeah. actually sought you out because of the attention you got because of being victimized. Yeah. It happened right, a couple of times. Um, cause they wanted to see if I was the crazy, you know, like psychopath that he made me out to be. And then, you know, we're sitting there and we're having normal conversations or just like, you know, being young people. And, and he's like, Hey, you know, I kind of got to tell you, like, you're, you're a really nice girl and stuff. And I don't want to like, it, it sucks. Um, so how did, how did you react to that? How did that feel for you to hear that from somebody? Uh, I think I dealt with it after, um, I, I'm the type of person where I try to understand where people are coming from. Um, and so I would just kind of be like, Okay, um, I get it. <laughs> um, I wish you would have gotten to know me first and then made your assumptions later. But um, yeah, I got to the point where I just stopped telling people my name at all. I, I mean, I stopped meeting people to, in general. Did you, have, did you have any idea when you did the initial show a couple months ago here that you would get that kind of a blowback, that kind of a reaction? 
I knew. Um, but also I think that, I mean, recently I've taken it upon myself to speak to a therapist and kind of like talk about how this has all affected me. And, uh, I, I've definitely got PTSD from this crap, you know, like it, it, I've spent a lot of nights just like not myself feeling like it's all coming down on me again and it's all happening again. And, you know, I've had to really like kind of, you know, put your chin up Shiloh. Like this is, this is the end of the the pain and, and realizing that this isn't my reality anymore, but it's all really real. What he did to us. And I mean, like, I, I, I speak from all the girls that we're all really messed up from him. And this all coming up again is overwhelming. Um, we're people and we are just girls that got victimized by a horrible, horrible person. And so I don't think any of us really expected how it was going to feel and how it was going to get us like I think it's so sad that she described, you know, a dating scene where the guy was like, oh, it was a bet, you know, to come date you to see if you were as crazy as he was describing you. I think that's so traumatic and just such an experience that I would absolutely go dark myself as well. I wouldn't want to meet people either. Knowing what that situation could potentially be like, I'd be terrified to meet anybody. I really would. So the fact that that's something that she lost out on, just, you know, the regular youthful dating scene, that she clearly wanted to move on with her life and was ready at that point or just ready to just go meet people and mingle, that that's something she had to deal with. That is so traumatic. Recently on Twitter, I think it was a little over a month ago, she decided to say that she was taking a step down from the initial like Twitter stuff and... I guess all of that, she had her own personal investigation going on. And I think that when you can realize that you need to take a break from social media, that there is nothing wrong with that. The magnitude and the reach that this has all had, I can only imagine what that could do to one's day-to-day -day life. You know, how much they're checking Twitter, how much they're focusing on this, how much they're focusing on that. And these are tools that I'm sure her therapists have helped her with. And I think that her taking herself seriously in that moment in time and saying, hey, this is me needing to take a step back. It's not because I don't care about this. It is merely because I am trying to help protect myself as in this as well. It's absolutely acceptable. Absolutely acceptable. I think it is one of the greatest tools that she has in her collection of mental health guidance. And I think that her using that, it only gives an example to everybody dealing with stressful situations that it's okay to self-care. I hope that all of the people speaking out about this have reached out that they have tried their best to gain knowledge on self-care as well and um, that they're implementing that into their daily lives because I can, only, I can only imagine how stressful all of this is. And I know there's so many layers and levels of all of this for each one of them that they're possibly dealing with and some of them describe it, you know, and some of them keep quiet about it, but we know it's there as viewers. That's why I try to remain so respectful in how I describe situations. I don't try to use triggering words about specifically like what Onision talked about, right? I just say that it was a very sensitive topic he did not have the right to talk about um, because it was so traumatic. I just, I really aim to be respectful of their pain, I guess you could say, because a lot of people take advantage of it to get a monetary gain. And for me, this is not a monetary gain. I see this as a movement, a movement of people speaking up that otherwise maybe felt like they didn't have an opportunity to or didn't have the power or the gumption to do so. Now finding that within themselves, I think that that is a very strong, positive, great message. Um, I do want to gl slightly gloss over one thing that Onision did talk about. The fact that he says most real, in quote, most real victims stay silent unquote. That message I do not stand by and nor do a lot of the people involved in this situation because while yes, some people do stay silent for a very long time, they have their reasons for that. That it does not mean that you're not a real victim if you decide or a survivor or if you decide to come out about it. The strength that it takes to come out about something on this magnitude or any magnitude just with a friend on a one-on-one -on -one basis is so immense and so empowering and 
so crucial to that person and their choice. So what I will say is that it is your choice as a person who has ever had anything happen to you, whether or not you want to come out about it, whether or not you choose that 10 years down the line or 10 days down the line or 10 seconds down the line, it is your choice. And when that happens, just know there will be support waiting for you in any situation, even outside of the Omnision situation. Um, I think that that statement that he made was a gaslighting technique, a backpedaling technique, and a silencing every victim technique in, in any possible way. And I think it was disgusting and horrible. And Chris Hansen did gloss over that as well with Shiloh in his interview. Um, and I just wanted to bring my piece on that and what I thought about that. But in closing today, guys, I am going to be starting that new series. Let me know what you guys think about it, though. I'll put at least one video out, see what reactions happen and if it you know if it basically does anything for anybody if it's just a waste of breath or if it does anything for anybody and you guys get some sort of you know help from that situation um, let me know if you guys have any ideas in the comment section below or on my community page I do want to let you guys know that I do have a patreon up I have a one dollar tier and I believe a three dollar tier or it's a two dollar tier one dollar or one dollar is the first one and then I think it's two or three dollars the second one I'll have to double check but basically some video videos that will not be on YouTube will be posted there in the $3 tier and then you'll get a whole bunch of other stuff that you can check out with the site um, on what you'll get per tier. Um, and I just would love to see some of you guys there if you guys would like to support the channel outside of YouTube. Um, and thank you guys so much for showing up to this video. I hope you all have a beautiful week and a weekend. And that video the, with the new series video will be coming out in the next couple of days-ish, four or five days probably realistically. Um, but again, thank you so much. If you're new, subscribe, go ahead and like this video if you could, because it does help me out a lot. And um, if you're returning, thank you so much for being here. I do have a discord and all sorts of stuff linked in the description box below for you guys to so check out that. And uh, yeah, kiss the stars.